Hidden Adventures Mad Love Deluxe Edition. Writer is Paul Dini, artist slash plotter is Bruce Tim, colorist is Bruce Tim and Rick Taylor, letterer is Tim Harkins, character of Harley Quinn is created by Paul Dini and Bruce Tim, published by DC Comics. What started out as a simple character to basically add some pizzazz on a children's cartoon that hit the more mature themes is now one of the most iconic of the DC comic lineup. So how does this comic book based on the golden standard that is the Batman the Animated Series stack up? If you enjoy my reviews, do the YouTube thing, feed the algorithm, and here we go. The coloring is consistent with itself in the book and also from the TV show. One can say it's a bit too simplistic, but the simple nature works for this comic book than against it. I imagine those who think it isn't enough are just haters. I am giving this a star plus because A, I like the show, and B, I happen to like the style and art of Bruce Tim. One only needs to look at his art books to know that he knows his anatomy. The paneling is what you would expect from an American comic book, and whether or not it captures the show is subjective. I think it feels like it was pulled straight from the storyboard and arranged appropriately. Take that however you like. Though it may seem that storyboards are where Bruce Tim shines, but that is a very nitpicky and subjective position. The more expressive nature of the cartoon style helps accentuate the big moments in the story, and because of that I am giving it a star because it was done well, and it is certainly pretty creative for an American comic book. It would be better if more American comic books followed this kind of example for paneling. The characters of the Batman the Animated Series aren't without personality, it's part of its charm. The comic book, however, doesn't add too much from the cartoon episode this is based off of. It does give you a little bit more of a backstory to Harley Quinn, though it does paint her in a less than acceptable light. I think one might even call it problematic. But then again, she was never an avatar to be admired for her virtues. And since the episode was pretty good, so was this. This gets a star. The additions that Bruce Tim or Paul Dini added can be appreciated. After all, it fits in with the general themes of the show, and that consistency is a good thing. But I have to be frank, it was done much better in the cartoon. This book starts with a forward. I don't know if it was always a part of the comic, but it does give you a bit more context in which Paul Dini and Bruce Tim came up with the story. It circles around the idea of a bad relationship. Specifically, and in Paul Dini's own words, when you fall so passionately for a person, particularly the wrong person, that nothing else in the world matters. That was the theme of the book set in the world they created, and focusing on that one theme is something that I haven't really read in terms of modern comics, you know, digital age, post Twitter and whatnot. They tend to put in those multiple themes to make things more layered, but often I find that it just makes everything so much more muddled or muddied. I'm giving this a star plus because focusing on that one theme, although it was a dark and tragic one to be honest, made it better than you would think. And certainly it is layered in that fact that it shows that there's not such a simple answer to it. And because it's not something that most people would enjoy at the end, for the ending, that's kind of what makes it great, right? The plot is simple enough. Spoilers, but then again, this is a pretty old series, so not really. Sorry. Uh, you have Joker and Harley getting foiled by Batman, in which Batman says that this recent crime was sloppy. And the Joker gets upset by this, which means overall he isn't paying attention to Harley. We get some backstory and then Harley placing the blame on her relationship to Joker on the Batman. So she sets up a trap to capture Batman, succeeds, has him at her mercy, only to be foiled essentially by her love for Joker, who found her attempt to be, quote, not comedic enough. Joker, who then confronts Harley, ends up shoving her through a window. Big moment. And it ends with a fight between the Joker and Batman. Star plus. Simple story, beginning, middle, end. It adds to the lore of the show. So what else could you ask for? Five stars, three pluses. And that's just for the comic itself. So this is just one issue of this comic book series. There was a whole comic book run along with the TV show, which was pretty standard for cartoons in the 90s. 
the thing that makes this one pretty great is that you get rough pencils and color drafts with notes as well at least in this book it's a nice how to make comics and you know this was printed before so you know this was before the age of youtube where you could see things in real time or in live streams now the background context added within this comic is something that people who enjoy comics just love and speaking of background context this character was born of the tv show just another goon but for some reason this character was a hit with not only the creators but with the audience as well joker's girlfriend eventually found a life of her own within the pantheon of dc comic book creations in basically 25 some years her popularity puts her on the same level as the dark knight himself or at the very least the head executives at dc think so otherwise why would they focus so much on her in the dceu age I also think I should address one thing that those of the quote woke crowd end quote will find problematic. The part where we learn more about how Harleen Quinzel becomes Dr. Harleen Quinzel. In the cartoon, Harley's education was shown to be when she first enters Arkham, which implied that Harley Quinn was a top student. In this comic, she turns into the quote, I'll do anything for an A kind of student, which isn't that great, as it implies that she was simply an immoral kind of gal from the beginning, which goes against the whole falling for the wrong person theme set up in the cartoon. And ironically, the Harley Quinn cartoon released in 2019 didn't exactly do a good job in this department either in that she came from a home in which her dad was a selfish dad uh, sacrificing his daughter's future for his personal gains through gambling and you know he's somewhat abusive too in that sense you know emotionally and it, it also shown that harley was crazy from the beginning you know before joker and that show was supposed to be the more politically correct and yet still edgy version which defeats the whole purpose of the theme set up in the batman the animated series you know where she first showed up in that harley quinn who was a good person fell in love with the wrong person and to that makes her a flawed but relatable character it gives her an arc it makes one cheer for her even though she's a bad guy making her just batshit crazy from the beginning but also sympathetic because other men around her are so much worse is really an odd standpoint to be on. But regardless, it would be to the benefit of any fan of Harley to read through this. We see a lot of things in modern day Harley depictions that were born from this show back in the 90s. Her charm, her wit, her abilities, all here for the enjoyment of true believers and newcomers alike. Yes, I know that's what, you know, Stan Lee says, but Stan Lee was also a fan of DC Comics. Can't deny that part either. If you enjoyed these reviews, do the YouTube thing, feed the algorithm. Thank you for making it this far. I do really appreciate it, and I hope you're having a good day or good evening. Ciao, everybody.